back to California Cooking. Here's what's happening on today's show. It's the best of both worlds. I'm cooking up a summer chicken eggplant parm. Then I'm getting in the kitchen and chatting with the founder of the popular food blog, What's Gabby Cooking? And she's showing me how to make a quick and easy chopped salad. And then I'm taking the humble cauliflower and turning it into the star of the show. Okay, maybe you have the same problem I have. When you go to a restaurant, do you get chicken parm or eggplant parm? So I decided to combine the two with my summer chicken eggplant parm. Take a look. I always think it's a hard decision whether or not to order chicken parmesan or eggplant parmesan when you go to a restaurant. So I'm gonna do both together. Chicken, eggplant, parmesan, but I'm gonna try to lighten it because obviously chicken parm and eggplant parm is fried. And I think in the summer months, I tend to eat lighter and not do things that are maybe deep fried. So I'm going to just saute the chicken, saute the eggplant. I'm making a fresh tomato sauce with some fresh mozzarella on top and then top it with a little breadcrumb. So you still get the breadcrumb feeling and taste, but much, much lighter. And what you do with eggplant, um, they do have a lot of water in the seeds. So I salt them and let it just sit for a little bit and draw out some of that water. Fresh mozzarella, as opposed to the mozzarella that you get shredded, I just think there's something about it that's so, so much better. So I'm gonna cut this into slices and we'll put one on top of each chicken and eggplant and we'll pop it under the broiler to melt it. Now for our chicken, I'm going to just salt it and pepper it, some oregano or dried oregano I should say, and some garlic powder and that's it. Then we're gonna take it back to the skillet, olive oil, cook it until it's nice and brown. Got some olive oil in the bottom of the pan. We'll just saute them up. Okay, in here I've got about a tablespoon of butter, drizzle of olive oil, and like I said, instead of deep frying, I'm just gonna take some panko breadcrumb and toast it, and that'll be our bread topping. And then I'm gonna hit it with a little salt. All right, let's turn our chicken. Okay, egg, my pan's a little hot. Eggplant going in. And eggplant are like sponges and they soak up the oil so you've gotta just see how it's doing. All right, going in, lower the heat and just let that go. So here's our assembly line. We have our chicken cutlets, we have our eggplant cooked, our breadcrumbs browned in butter and olive oil, our cheese cut and now to our sauce. So. In this cast iron skillet, I put two pints of cherry tomatoes, whole garlic cloves, fresh basil, olive oil, and salt. And I just stuck it in the oven at like 425 for about 30 minutes. And these tomatoes just got beautiful and soft and caramelized. So did the garlic. So I'm just gonna take my fork. And this just creates a nice fresh tomato sauce as opposed to one in the jar, which I use a lot, but I think it's just gonna give it that summery, fresh vibe that I'm going for. Okay, done, there's your tomato sauce. Let me assemble these and show you how we're gonna do it. Take our chicken, eggplant on each one, then fresh tomato sauce. And especially when tomatoes are good in the summer, this sauce doesn't need a thing. Mozzarella, one piece on each. And then I'm gonna pop this in the broiler and when we take it out, we'll top with bread. So on top are crunchy, buttery breadcrumbs. And to top it all off, some basil. Cute, voila. That was so good and I really enjoyed the lighter take on that dish. Coming up, I'm making a cauliflower dish that you will crave. It's that good. Then, Levi loves making lemonade in the summer, so I'm gonna show you the key ingredients we use in our homemade lemonade. But first, I'm learning how to make Gabby Dalkin's LA Chop Salad from her new cookbook. That's coming up next. She has quite the following on her food blog, What's Gabby Cooking? And now she's out with her new book, 
eat what you want. I love the sound of that. Gabby and I chat and we make the most scrumptious salad full of meat and cheese. What could be bad about that? Take a look. Hi, Gabby. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you too. So what have you been up to these last couple months? Uh, my book came out back yeah. in April. And we were supposed to go on a 30 city book tour. So we've just kind of been having like a virtual book tour party and eating and all that kind of stuff. So this is your third book. Yes. And my third, my third child. Your third child. Eat what you want. I love your approach because your big message is, you know, you just do it in moderation or you make you make little tweaks on things, right? So something that is quote unquote, not good for you. If you change up a few things, it then can become not so bad for you. Right, or do it in balance. I just kind of think when you restrict yourself, or if you're gonna say, I'm not gonna have any cheese or I'm not gonna have any gluten or whatever it is, unless of course you have a food allergy. For me, I just end up like eating a full block of Colby Jack from Costco at the end of the day. So I would rather do it all in balance and moderation and eat all of it than, you know, have those restrictions on myself. Right. What's different about this book than, than your other books? This book, I feel like when the second book came out, which is called Everyday California Food, it was really just like an array of all these foods inspired by California that you can make no matter where you live. Yeah. But I got so many messages from people who are like, you're not actually eating that whole cheese board or you don't really eat cookies, do you? And I was like, Yes, I do, but like I have friends over pre-quarantine and you know, we I bring people mm -hmm. to the table so we can all enjoy these things together. So that's really what this book focuses on. They're like very easy approachable recipes. None of the ingredients are gonna be hard to find. Yeah. And it's just like good food at the end of the day. Right, to talk to parents and look, there are adults who won't eat vegetables or won't eat fish or whatever. How, how do you change someone's mindset where they start to try things? They're like, I don't like that but right. then eventually learn to love things that are good for you. I think like, for example, my dad was guilty of this. My dad hated Brussels sprouts because growing up, his mother would just boil sure. them or clean yeah. them. So I think a lot of it has to do with technique. So for vegetables, in my mind, if you ever are skeptical of one, you either roast it, high heat, 425, olive oil, salt and pepper, or you barbecue it or grill it. Or fry it. <laughs> or fry it. And those like crispy bits, make it kind of taste a little bit more candy like there's a little yeah. bit it's just a little bit more addictive like candy let's talk about the blog because there are so many blogs out there and i think yeah. people think well how does someone's blog get traction how do people know about someone's blog yeah so when i first started the blog back in 2009 i think the only person reading it was my mother like hands down <laughs> period end of story and back in those days, Twitter was a really big deal. So I remember I would go post recipes on Twitter and talk to other food bloggers and make connections. And the food blogging world is actually like really incredibly supportive of each other because we all work so like alone at home. You have these coworkers around the country that are doing something similar to you. Now it's via Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all these different things. So I would say if you're starting, mm -hmm. you find your like tribe of people, no matter where in the world they live and like find them and like, like you help promote them, they're gonna help promote you. And it's all, what is that saying? A rising tide yeah, raises all boats. Yeah. yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that's true. And so Eat What You Want, your third book, is it divided into different categories? Yeah, so the chapters are a little cheeky because I think that's just more exciting yeah. than a regular chapter, regular title. So we've got the most important meal of the day, which is breakfast. So easy Thomas can do it, which is a chapter dedicated to my husband because the man couldn't cook a couple years ago. We've slowly taught him things. Way to go, so Thomas. <laughs> they're th so they're more, and then the, my other favorite one is, if at first you don't succeed, have dessert. Yes. <laughs> Let's make your chopped salad. You call this the LA chopped salad? Yes, okay. this is the LA chopped because like so many restaurants in LA have a rendition of it. It starts here with chopped lettuce and radicchio. Look at us, we're so prepped. <laughs> I hope so, I did the right thing, okay. That's great. And for everyone who doesn't know what radicchio looks like, that's the inside of a radicchio. It's beautiful. It's a little bitter, but not too yeah. bitter. Right, it, because the other lettuce you have, do you have iceberg or did you go romaine? 
I have Lyford and Romaine because I, I just bought it all. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can't go wrong. So to that, we're gonna add cherry tomatoes, chickpeas. I don't know about you, but my hummus obsession is like next level. So I always have a can of chickpeas on hand. Then we're gonna add a little bit of mozzarella cheese. Like I like fresh mozzarella. Okay. And then we've got provolone. Yes, I got my provolone. The ratios in the book are a little heavy on the cheese and the meat in this recipe because it feels like that's just what life exactly. is about right now. Um, the, normally we have red onion. I have a Vidal Vidalia onion. So do I. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Same and some pepperoncini. Okay, love pepperoncini. Yeah, and that's that. basically the base of it. And then we can add some meat. I have a little bit of sausage or a little salami. You have, oh, you already yeah. cut yours up. Look cut at you. Salami. I'm just going to cut up a little bit and add it. Oh, and then right. we just have our dressing. And the dressing is garlic, shallots, lemon juice and then you just add a little bit of red wine vinegar look at you your jar you're ready to go i got it easy Take it up and throw it in a million and different options on to top and you're, this is the la chop yum easy. And salt, and pepper. salt and pepper yeah and maybe a little oregano just because we're, we're fancy <laughs> i love it gobby should we taste i feel we should yeah. taste Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to get a bite with all the cheese. Okay. Let me get in here. And it's light and bright and like perfect for the summer. Also, this would sit really well if you were going to a barbecue. You could dress this and drive somewhere. Yeah. Your friend's house, family's house, whatever. It would be fine. You know what would go really good with this? A pizza. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good though. This would actually be so good on a pizza. On like a pizza. Put cheese on it and then like a salad pizza. <laughs> That's why I love you, Gabby. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you. You too. Bye. Bye. I loved hanging out with Gabby. She's so much fun and that salad was so yummy. If you want the recipe, you can go to our Instagram at KTLA California Cooking. Coming up, I'm showing you how to make a pan-seared cauliflower dish with an herb dressing that is so good. Then, Levi's helping me stir up his favorite lemonade. That's coming up next. Okay, confession. I am not a fan of cauliflower. I remember the way my mom used to make it growing up. No offense, mom, where it was just boiled and bland. So. I figured out a way to pan roast it, and then I made a dressing with a bunch of herbs, and it's become one of my new favorites. Take a look. You know, I was inspired, I was talking to Gabby today, and she mentioned learning to love vegetables. And I gotta be honest, I've never loved cauliflower or broccoli for that matter, or Brussels sprouts, but she's so right. When you brown something and you get those crispy bits, almost everything tastes good. And my husband has been on this major diet lately where he's eating a, a lot of veggies. So I'm trying to get creative with vegetables and I made this the other night. And we've all heard of the cauliflower steak where you cut the cauliflower and you cook it. People get upset about the reference to a steak and I get it, this is not a steak but I am going to cut it that way and brown it and then put some herbs and a dressing and it's good. It could either be an entree, it could be a side, whatever. Big knife, you cut your cauliflower like this. Okay, so it, it makes these kind of a things. And even though you go, well that part's really hard, it is, but I cook it so long that it gets soft and brown and delicious. So we're gonna take these, I've got a cast iron skillet back there getting very hot, and I'm gonna cook these as many as I can fit in the pan, get them nice and brown, pop them in the oven for a little bit to cook them even longer, and then I'll put this yummy stuff on top. Okay, so I put the cauliflower in here, some olive oil, salt, pepper, and then I let it cook at first on a really high temperature and then I turned it down probably about five minutes. But what you want is this, where it gets all the brown bits all around the cauliflower. That's, there we go. That is where the flavor comes in. So the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season the cauliflower and I didn't season the other side because it would burn the spices. So I have some smoked paprika 
some cumin, which I put on everything. It's an earthy, yummy spice. And a little turmeric. But if you don't have these, it's okay. You don't need it. If you have one of them, great. Now I'm gonna put it in an oven just to cook it all the way through so it's nice and soft. 450, put the whole thing in here. And while our cauliflower is in the oven, I'm gonna make a quick little dressing uh, to pour over it. So I'll start with some Dijon mustard, uh, garlic, I'll do a clove of garlic, some honey, like a teaspoon of honey, splash of red wine vinegar. Let's do some lemon. And the thing about homemade dressings, you taste, right? When you're done, give it a taste, add more vinegar, add more mustard, whatever. Uh, some pepper, and just salt. And the olive oil. And then you mix until it becomes emulsified. Checking on our cauliflower, look at that. Browned and beautiful, okay. These are all soft and brown. They have a completely different flavor than a boiled or steamed cauliflower would have. No contest, it is a game changer. To that, I have a bunch of herbs here. I have basil, mint, dill, you could do parsley, whatever you want, and a lot of it. And I'm gonna add that on top, chop. I'm gonna top with the dressing and add that dressing while it's hot because it's gonna soak in there. And then toasted pine nuts. And there you go. I'm telling you, give it a try. It's good. Okay, even I'm surprised how much I love that cauliflower. It is so good. It's all about the caramelization of the cauliflower. Mm. Okay, on to my little foodie. He's a big fan of homemade lemonade, as am I, especially this time of year. So we put our little twist on lemonade. You know, one of our favorite treats on a hot day is homemade lemonade. Hi, Levi. Yeah, I love homemade must. Le uh, what is it? Lemonade. Lemonade. <laughs> so what we did the other day, actually, I made a little cocktail for Daddy. I took mint, I took basil, and I muddled it, and I added lime and lemon and some, and made a little cocktail. So I decided for Levi's lemonade, which we make probably once a week, to add in some fresh mint and some fresh basil, and it totally changes the flavor of your lemonade. It's really simple, but just that little tweak makes such a difference. So Levi, I have a big job for you to do. Can you pull the, the mint leaves off and put them in here? So I have an old milk container that I saved, and then we're gonna take some beautiful basil leaves. Basil, I got this little plant at the grocery store, actually, which is so nice, because then I plant it when I'm done but I think a good amount. Now, here's another big job, Levi. You're gonna muddle it. So you take the back of the spoon and you, yeah, really good. Me look. Levi's talking to Bibi. Bibi takes look. care of Levi when I'm at work. Levi, how much do you love Bibi? A lot. A lot. Maybe we'll give her, um, we'll give Bibi a glass too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Smell in there. Oh, this one smells so good. Time for the lemons. And we just, I roll them too, or if they're really hard, I just pop them in the microwave for a couple seconds, but roll them out to get the juice going. Okay. And that's we make, just that's squeeze. Make the whole, so the, everything can come out of here. Yeah. I don't know how many we're gonna need. It's one of those, depend, you know, every lemon, produces a different amount of juice. To our lovely basil and mint, we're gonna pour in our lemon juice. Look at all the guts. Mm. Look at all the guts. I know. And instead of sugar, which you could absolutely use or you could make a simple syrup, I just use agave because it easily melts right in. You don't have to try to dissolve it. And this is a, I like mine a little more tart, so I probably put a tablespoon in there. We'll, we'll check it out. Now, water. Okay, lid on. And now. They're gonna spray me. Woo, I know, it gets a little green in there. 
Also, Levi, what we're gonna do, will you do me a favor? Fill our cute glasses here with some ice. Thank you for holding it, perfect. I'm gonna fill them all the way up to the top. You ready for the pour? Okay. Cheers. Will you give me a cheers? What do you think? Mmm. Yum! Is that for BB? That's for BB. That's for BB. How about this? I'm gonna make BB another glass so she doesn't have to drink mine. We also have some leftover. So with the leftover, I thought it would be really fun to fill our popsicles and Levi. We also, the perfect summer treat, have fresh cherries. Let me. So put some cherries in each popsicle. Also and that'll lemon. be like a fun little cold surprise in our lemon lemonade popsicle. Let's put this inside too. This is gonna be a lot of sweet. Too. Aren't these fun with the cherries floating in them? And when it's hot later this afternoon, you can have a nice cherry lemonade. It's not the afternoon yet. Exactly. I'll tell you, there's something about homemade lemonade on a hot summer day, nothing like it. And those popsicles, such a refreshing treat. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you guys next time. So Levi, you ready? Cutting this so it's not, doesn't look gross. And I remember this, Levi, when I was growing up. Hello? I'm not going down. Oh, boy, it didn't overflow. One more. It did overflow me. It's a volcano. Okay. Levi, how much do you love Vivi? A lot. A lot. Maybe we'll give her, um, we'll give Vivi a glass too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? That's why we, we have a lot of basil. Yeah. Okay.